This is Andy Schaefers with Acuity. Today I've got a presentation and demonstration on low-cost derivative document creation. This presentation should be of interest to AS9100 aerospace machine shops. Here are my objectives for the demonstration in a little more detail. I want to show you how to create, maintain, and revise derivative documents while at the same time showing you how you can achieve compliance with standards from your digital product definition requirements. So I'm focusing on the AS9100 machine shops, generally our customers that are using NX CAM for programming, and certainly NX can be used to create those derivative documents, but we found many shops looking for a, a low-cost solution for creating some of these derivative documents. In more detail then, we are focusing on Boeing suppliers with a QMS or quality management system that's subject to the Boeing D682479 standard which would make them a subject also to the supplemental standard which is D651991 which covers digital product definition. In that standard we will spend most of our time then in area 2.2 which is configuration management and traceability. Boeing maintains a copyright over those standards and so we won't be putting any of that text on the screen. However, we will provide a link in the video description. They're short standards so you can download them and follow along. Here are the software applications I'll be demonstrating today. The authority part will be in NX the derivative documents will be in Solid Edge. These are both parasolid based CAD systems owned by Siemens. They have a unique ability to create documents associated to each other. A product that's missing from our list is Team Center. We need to limit the scope of our demo today, so although I'll mention ECNs, we won't be demonstrating automated workflows or ECN release approvals or any of the other things that uh, the Team Center PLM solution would provide you. Let's start our demo. On the screen I have up NX12 with our customer part, revision A, or rather our authority part. It's a casting. It has some turn features inside and then a manifold ceiling face with some holes on the outside. I'll switch over to Solid Edge now. Solid Edge is a mid-range CAD system owned by Siemens. It's easy to learn and use and it has a unique capability. It's able to create an associative link to an NX CAD file. So I'll do that now. Here in my authority vault I will link to the RevA customer part. Here then I've created the associative part copy back to the NX file. I can double check and trace this link by holding my mouse over it and at the very bottom of the screen I see the link to the authority vault and customer part RevA. This part that I'm creating and the drawing or derivative document that I need is for the lathe department. I want them to be able to inspect before they send this part on to the milling department. I want to make the model look like it will when it leaves their area. I'm going to use the direct modeling commands to do that. So here I need to delete these holes. So I'll select the different segments of the holes. Next, there's some machining stock up here. I'll pop it up 50 thousandths. and then round that off. Next, it's time to create the dimensions. 
I'm actually going to be demonstrating two techniques for you. On this model, I'm going to create PMI dimensions here in the 3D model and then display those PMI dimensions on the drawing sheet. In the other model, I'll go straight to the drawing sheet and use a more traditional approach. I'll create my first PMI or product manufacturing information view now. This will be a view looking down from the top and I'll name it top so that I can reference it when I get to the drawing. Here I'll place two dimensions that I want checked in the lathe department. I'll also add a datum. The next thing I want to do is make sure that these dimensions and the datum are associated with the view that I defined. So here I'll add the dimensions to the top view. And here I've added the annotation. At this time, let's create a second view. And I'll hide these dimensions. This will be a right end view. And I, I would like this to be a section view. I just need to draw a rectangle that defines that cutting plane. Now I'll dimension the internal features in this section. At this time, I'll add a datum to this smaller diameter dimension. And that will actually stay associative. So if I move the dimension, the datum will move with it. Now I'll add a feature control frame to one of the larger dimensions. In this case, I need concentricity, then a divider, and that's going to be 2 datum A. Finally, we'll add a couple of dimensions for the depth of these bores. As I did in the previous view, I'll need to make sure that all of these features belong to the right view. Let's take care of that now. As I select features, I need to make sure that I grab the section view, the five dimensions, the datum frame, and the feature control frame. Once that's completed, it's easy to switch from one view to the other. Let's reapply the top view. That reorients the view, brings back the appropriate dimensions and the datum. Now we'll reapply the right view. Once again, it reorients, finds the right dimensions, and also the section view. As part of our requirements under D6 51991, section 2.2, we need to have our own internal revision system for our derivative documents and we need to be able to trace back from our derivative documents to the authority part. 
we're going to take care of that compliance now by adding custom properties or metadata to this solid edge part file. First, I'll give this a title, and I should indicate that although this metadata will live with the part file, we'll be using it in just a minute uh, so that it can be put on the face of the drawing sheet. I'm going to start with Rev E on these. and my internal document number is 6839. The project though is 1215. In the custom area, I have created some properties that help me with the traceability of my derivative documents. First of all, I can designate the area where this derivative document is valid to be used and I have my different areas of my company here and this document gets used in the lathe area. Then of course I'll specify the customer, the customer part number, and the customer revision level which is just A. Now I'm ready to save my file. And this is dash E for revision E. I can go back at any time though and make edits to these PMI dimensions. For instance, in this case, I'll add a plus or minus five tolerance. This file though is ready to be used as a derivative document on the shop floor. However, if I prefer a more traditional drawing type layout, I can use this model to create that drawing. Let's do that now. I have a template already set up that I use for derivative drawings. It contains the title block that I need for compliance to Boeing specification. The metadata that we typed in earlier is going to appear in the correct areas here in the title block as soon as I place a view. Let's start though with those PMI views that I've already defined. Okay, there's my two views. I'll save this document and accept the default name. Something else I should have pointed out is we are using data management here in the background which, which comes with Solid Edge and so our documents are currently being saved to the working directory where we have both read and write access to them. Okay, I've got a little target here that I can get rid of. So now we see the uh, drawing number appear. That's my internal number, my internal revision. On the left side though, the area where this derivative document is can be used, the customer, customer part number, and the customer revision. Then the date when this document was created. At this point, our derivative documents would go through our internal ECN process for approval. We won't be showing that in this demo, but we'll pick things up at, at the point where the documents are approved and they now need to be moved to the release directory so that they are accessible to the shop. I'm going to use the design manager in SolidEdge to do that. 
Before I actually move those documents though, a little bit about the design manager. It sees the internal links in the documents and then gives us this tree structure. So starting with the draft document, which is linked to the part and then finally linked to our uh, authority part there in the vault. Now this actually then demonstrates another part of uh, section 2.2 in the Boeing standard that the supplier can demonstrate traceability to the current authority and any derivatives data set including file name and file extension and uh, we are in fact showing that compliance here in the, the design manager. Okay at this point then let's move those two documents and we'll put them in the release directory. Okay, now let's return back to Solid Edge. Now I'll begin our second derivative document. Recall that for the first document I used PMI in the model and then used that in the drawing. On our second one though, we're going to use a more traditional approach where we just bring the model into the drawing and then create all the dimensions and annotations there. This first part is going to be review. I just need to link the authority part back in again. And we won't be using any direct modeling. Uh, we'll take the model as is, it doesn't need to be modified, but we do need to go to the uh, file properties or metadata and fill that out. This is my uh, internal document number. And then next it's the custom properties. This will be cell one is my area of use. And then finally, the customer's revision level was A. Okay, I've saved that then in the working directory. Let's create that second drawing now. I can switch my view here real quick. Next, let's take a couple steps and create a, a section view. Okay, I'll spend just a minute and put a couple of dimensions on. And as before, if we want to go uh, to place datums, it's pretty much the same workflow. Here's some additional annotations, for instance, uh, center lines. Okay, let's save this document now. That's a quick overview then of this second technique 
for the creation of the derivative document. Most people find that if you don't require the 3D PMI dimensions, that this technique is actually faster and gives you better control over the placement of the annotations. Now the final step here would be to once again go through the ECN process and then place these documents in the release directory so they're accessible. I'm going to do that off screen as I've already shown you that on the other uh, derivative documents. This is the last step in the presentation. Our compliance with the Boeing standards require that we be able to deal appropriately with a revision coming in for the authority part. Let's look at that now. I'll start in the design manager and I'm going to open the Rev A customer part knowing that a Rev B part has just arrived. So first I need to know all the areas in my company where derivative documents have been created using this authority part. The where use search tells me that there are two documents. Those are the two part models that I created earlier. Now I'll do a where use search on those models and I find two drawings that have been created. I'm going to then revise these drawings and make copies of them as Rev F. Now sometimes customers, customers will say well, in the future, I might still get an order for Rev A. If that's the case, then we would actually be making copies of these to some other project or something, giving them new internal document numbers so that you could have a parallel process for either revision. So that's certainly possible. But in the demo here today, we're just revising the process that we have. So let's do that now and it automatically assigns Rev F and it's taking them and putting them not in the release directory but back in the working directory which is correct. So I'll perform actions. I've created the new Rev F files but they're still pointing back at the Rev A customer part. Let's deal with that situation now. I'll browse over to the working directory and select those two part files, the new RevF files. So I've got a window for each one of them and I want to replace the Rev A customer part with Rev B. do that here also. Okay, that completes that part of the task. I will now return to Solid Edge and use those links we created to update our derivative documents quickly. I'll start with the draft document for the milling operation. By double clicking it, that will automatically open the part document that I created. And as I do so, it checks the date stamp back to the customer part and realizes that it's out of date. So watch what happens when I click OK. It automatically updates to the new uh, Rev B customer geometry. I'll save this file and when I return now to the draft document these rectangles indicate that the views are out of date. I'll just hit the button to update the views. They are now updated to the customer Rev B geometry and here it's telling me that this dimension has changed from 2064 it's now 2764. So I could start a revision list from here if I wanted to. In this case, I'm just going to clear the little uh, revision and save the document. 
The next step would be, of course, the ECN approval process and then moving those new RevF documents from the working folder to the release folder. Since I've already covered that, I did that process off screen. So there's now a final step, and this step actually is re related back to section 2.2 .2 in the Boeing document, and that com compliance involves um, archiving or obsoleting files that are no longer part of the current Rev level. So we have these dash or Rev E draft documents that we created, those are now obsolete. So let's move those to the obsolete folder. Let's review what we've covered in this presentation. We created derivative documents in two different ways. First, I created PMI dimensions and annotations in the 3D model, and then we used that to create a 2D drawing. In the second technique, we went straight to the 2D drawing to create our dimensions and annotations. We also used direct modeling on the first model to modify that geometry so it matched the process state that we wanted to document. Then, we were able to use the design manager in Solid Edge to trace back to our authority part, again showing compliance with the Boeing standard. And then we used those links to create a more productive situation in our shop as we facilitated a quick customer revision to the RevB authority part. Most of our videos are created based on suggestions that we receive. Are you creating a QMS at your company now or maybe making improvements to the one you already have? We'd love to hear from you. Please provide a comment below. Thank you for your attention today.